There's been an explosion of AI video editing tools this year, but there's so many of them, it's hard to weed through the ones that are actually useful. So that's what I'm gonna do in today's video, list out the top 10 video editing tools of 2023. Let's jump on in. So most AI tools cost a fee to use, but some of the AI tools are actually built into the software that you already use and pay for, like the Adobe Creative Cloud. So the first one is enhanced speech inside of Premiere Pro to get rid of background noise or reverb automatically. So here I have a clip where there's a lot of echo in the background. The elements are really easy to customize inside of After Effects. So instead of using a plugin, which I had to use before, I just go up here to enhance speech and turn this on and it will analyze the clip and now this is what it sounds like. Just simply find the effect that you wanna use, hover over it and click apply. The elements are really easy to customize. You can update the text fields, the media placeholders. It's just so good. Here's another example where I'm talking on the beach. So right now I'm on the beach and I'm using my iPhone mic. It's pretty noisy, right? So if I just click on enhanced speech, this is what it sounds like. And you know, there's a lot of noise happening around me. That background noise is just automatically removed. So even if you record with just the built-in microphone on your camera or on your phone in a noisy environment, you can now use the AI enhanced speech to fix it. And you have this slider, so you can choose to reduce the amount of enhancement or increase that depending on your shot. So for stock video and music and sound effects for video, my team uses Envato Elements to find these assets to then use in our projects. Previously, we'd have to go to the web browser and search for these effects. But now they developed a panel inside of Premiere Pro that's just called the Envato extension. So here, if I go to Window, go to Extensions, Envato, you will see here that I have the Envato panel open. Now, of course, you could go through here and search by keyword, and you can find your assets here and download them, and they will import directly into your project, which is great. But the reason why this is related to AI is because they now have this new search with Envato AI. So basically, it can find assets based on the frame that's currently at your playhead. Click on search for sound effects. And this will basically scrub the Envato Elements library for relevant sound effects that might fit this scene. So you can see that it got some soccer ball drops. That's great. But there's also some like random stuff here, like a car bypass, a zombie chase, but there are a few soccer sound effects, which is what I was looking for. But the results will change depending on the particular frame. So let's scrub to this moment where there's more water. So at this moment, I can go back and search for sound effects. Here's some rain, for example. So because I have a subscription, I can download the WAV file. If you do not have the subscription, that's okay. You can still use it, but you will get the version that has the preview watermark, which is this one. So I'll go ahead and click download and it will start to download and import into my project panel. And so then I can drag this sound effect and drop it here in my timeline. So next, let's try stock video. Let's move our playhead to a shot here and let's see if we can find some more B-roll clips that match it. So we can go to video here and search with Envato AI. And this is still in beta, by the way, but I think it's gonna be super useful to a lot of you who need to find more B-roll directly inside of your app. So we can scrub through and see if we can find any clips here that look remotely similar. I see here on the second page that there are a few clips that could work, so we can download these. And same with music. You can search for music tracks based on the image the playhead is at, and you will get results. Now, most of the results here are just named like on the lake based on the image. But if we play this back, audio jungle. jungle. It's pretty generic, right? But it could work. There's also rainforest. Audio jungle. Also pretty generic, but let's try this one. I like this one because it evokes more of a documentary feel, which is what I would want to get, but it would be nice if we had other controls here to refine it by genre or mood. Again, this is still in beta, but if you want to try it out, the panel is completely free. You don't need a subscription, but if you want to download without the watermarks, then you need to sign up for a subscription. And you can use my link below to get 70% off your first month to try it out. Okay, so next up is Photoshop's frame extension. This is the video timeline workspace in Photoshop. If you didn't know, Photoshop can work with video. So here is the cool part. 
if we click on the crop tool here, and what I'm gonna do first is just kind of expand the top part. So I don't wanna do the bottom yet because that will require a actual prompt to generate, let's say a wooden table in front of me. So up here, I've expanded this. Let's hit generate. And this is literally just expanding the frame upwards. And you might be like, wait a minute, where did it go? Well, that's because it created a layer over here inside of the video group. And what I wanna do is actually drag this video layer beneath. And then if we scrub over, you can see this is our generative expansion. So I can pull this over and you can see the result now. And let's go ahead and let's roll this out. And now you can see that it blends in pretty well, but we have two other variations here, but I think the first one looks good. And this is what it looks like. Already we have a taller video clip. Now what about beneath us? I can expand again a little bit to get a space here to put a desk. Let's type in table generate. All right, so here's the first result. It cast a little bit of a shadow here. This one looks pretty good. Let's try this one. I'm not sure what that is, some coins on a table. Let's go with the second one here. And I can expand this layer inside of our timeline here for the duration of the full video. So to use this new vertical video, go up to File, Export, Render Video. Here you can choose your specific format settings and then hit Render. And here is our new expanded vertical version that we can now use back in Premiere Pro. Now this works great for static backgrounds. The generative fill is a static image, it's not yet video. I would love to see that in the future because probably in the future they're gonna have generative video inside of Photoshop or maybe even in Premiere Pro. So next up is an app called NBoost that uses AI to automatically mix your sound levels. Here inside of Premiere Pro, I have this video that has dialogue, it has a music track, and it has sound effects down here. Now, if I play this back, you can see that it's hard to hear myself. The sound effects are a little bit difficult to hear and the music is really loud. So what you need to do is press S to solo each track, and then you can go to export to export each individual audio track as its own WAV file. Then inside of NBoost, click on open, and let's import our four different tracks. Here, NBoost will detect what type of audio it is, and sometimes it'll make a mistake. So first up, the first track is correct, this is our voice. This next one is actually music, so we need to change this to music. And then here, this is sound effects, so let's change this to the sound effects label. And down here, there's sound effects as well. Next, there's a few different things that we can do to make sure that the AI can improve our mix. So the first thing we need to do is confirm whether we have a constant source for our microphone, so just one mic or multiple. And in this case, we do not have multiple, just constant. And then compression, I'm going to choose natural, but of course you can try out different compression levels. For the music, I will choose the default here as well as the ducking, how much ducking, which is lowering of the volume, do you want when I am talking? And then the sound effects, I'm just going to leave this as the default level three and not have ducking turned on. And then mastering is like the compression of your overall mix. And in this case, I think it sounds better when it's just general. And then you can choose your delivery target. So online, you know, for social media is what we're going to use. All right, so the analysis is done. Let's click on export and let's save this as final mix. I'm going to drag in our final mix here into our timeline and I'm going to turn this off for now. I'm going to mute it so you can hear the original first. You can barely hear me talking at all. So let's go ahead and let's mute all of these tracks here. And this is the final mix. All of the elements perform much faster because they were natively, it sounds a lot better, right? So it even does the ducking, so it lowers when I'm talking and it increases when I'm not talking. So if you don't wanna deal with having to mix inside of Premiere Pro manually, you can use NBoost to do it for you. Next up is AutoPod's Jump Cut Editor. Now you can use AutoPod to basically assign values to each of the speakers on camera camera. Autopod will go through and cut to whichever person is speaking, which is very useful. But they've also added a new tool called the Jump Cut Editor, which will essentially cut out the silences inside of your timeline. So what you need to do first is nest all your clips together as one video clip, and then you can choose the silence cutoff decibel level. Once you have one that you select, you just select create jump cuts, and then it will have a completed jump cut edit for you. 
and you can see that these cuts were automatically made, which is a great starting point for people that are just about to go on to the next stage of editing, which is refinement after the rough cut stage. And of course, there's a free trial link just down below. The next tool that my team and I use all the time is Runway's AI Magic Tools. So here inside of Runway underneath video, we're going to click on edit videos and click on in painting. Runway is a completely online app, so you have to upload all your footage. So I've already uploaded my video clip. I'm going to just drag it here into this empty space and then it will load open the in painting app. So this is an aerial clip here, but in the background there's this barge, this ship that I don't want, this little orange buoy, and this post here. So let's go ahead and let's remove it, and I recommend starting from the beginning. And let's just paint over this barge that we don't want, paint over the orange buoy, and as we start to do it, it starts to remove these items from our scene. So let's paint out this post as well and the shadow beneath. And just like that, it's gone. So let's go ahead and let's preview it. And as it moves, it keyframes that rotoscoping that it does automatically to remove and fill in those areas just using AI, which is just incredible. So this is great if you need to remove anything from your videos quickly and then re-export it out to use it in whatever software that you use. So in this case, I would just click export and I would choose ProRes and export it out to use it back in Premiere Pro. The next one that might be useful to you is blurring faces that don't want to be seen on screen. So I have a clip here of this protester. I'm just going to double click on it. I've already uploaded it and it will automatically start to detect faces for you. So all you're doing here is you're just waiting. There's nothing yet here that will actually allow you to choose which faces specifically you want to blur. It'll just blur all of the people in the shot. So I think the next iteration of this would be you selecting which people that can be on camera and the other ones that need to remain blurred. So this is the original video here of him holding the sign. And if we turn on the blurred portion, you can see it blurs his face automatically. We didn't need to create a mask or create any movement. It does it for you automatically. And once again, you can click export or you could go through here and choose to add some more padding or some more blurriness to that square that overlays on top of his face. All right, next is super slow motion. So let's say you shoot something at normal speed at 24 frames per second, but you wanna make it super slow motion. What you can do here is click on super slow motion and you can upload your clip here. So this is shot at regular speed at 30 frames per second. Now what I can do is choose to lower the speed to like 0.4 the original speed and then click on process. So here's the original. And let's go back and here is the processed. It looks great, right? It doesn't look choppy. It looks like it was naturally shot at a higher frame rate. All right, next up is text to color to generate a LUT or a look for your video. So here you have this text field and let's say I want it to be an orange punch look, meaning that it's just has a lot of orange and saturation in this look. So we can just click on generate and it will just take a few seconds to apply whatever prompt you type in to that footage. And so here is the result. So it's kind of like an orange tealy type of look. So if you like this, you can download the cube file. And a cube file is just a LUT file that you can apply to footage in any editing software program, whether you use Resolve, Premiere, CapCut, Final Cut, anything. You can download this cube file version of this color grade, or you can just export the video clip and then use it in your software. So next, the most exciting thing in AI is AI generation, meaning text to video. So here underneath generate videos, you can go to text image to video. So you can upload an image to say, oh, you wanna produce a video like this image, or you can upload an image plus a description to add more description to AI to help them generate it. Or you can just use text alone. So here we can type out our scene. A realistic ship sailing through a sea storm at night. And then click on free preview because you can preview results before you generate. Because the generation works based off of credits, which is why I clicked on free preview before you click on generate because then it will use your credits that you have to generate with. So here are the results. The images look great. Let's try this one here. Let's generate four seconds. All right, let's see the results. Interesting. 
it animates the ocean in a unique way where it's not moving as naturally as I would like. But overall, I mean, if I was gonna include this inside of like a reenactment style video, like back in 1549, we were sailing in this ocean storm. I mean, I think it looks beautiful. So it's pretty incredible what you can create with these AI tools. And I just wanna reiterate that all of these tools that I listed in this video, they're not replacing you. They're just assisting you in your creative process. A lot of these tools enable you to create things that was not imaginable just a few years ago, which I think is really exciting. So if there's any other tools that I missed in this video that you use and you wanna share with other people in the community, just leave a comment below. And if you wanna check out the video that I created on how I made a music video just using AI, you can click right over here. And be sure to subscribe just by clicking on my profile. As always, thanks so much for watching and keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Woo!